Earlier this year, on April Fool's Day, Food Theory released an episode about Grubhub's bizarre 3D animated campaign. Some of you theorists out there dubbed the episode The New Sans's Nest. Now, I won't say we don't deserve that, but what I will say is that new Grubhub evidence has come to light. Evidence that confirms our theory and then some. I just opened this up and I just see this. Wait, hold up. <gasps> There's a USB drive in here. Wait, there is? Yeah. What? Buckle up, cause the deep well of Grubhub lore just got a whole lot deeper. Internet, welcome to Food Theory, the show that officially has merch now. That's right, theorists. Behind the scenes, we've been busy cooking up Food Theory t-shirts, reusable cups, pizza plushies, and my personal favorite, aprons. And let me tell you, I'm not blowing 84% hot air here, theorists. That is 100% swag. Friends, we went all out with our Food Theory merch. Feeling a little salty? Then you're gonna love our ramen champion t-shirt. You ever had a big gulp? Well, then try a Theory Gulp. It's one in a collection of three heavy duty reusable dishwasher safe food theory cups that are much better for your brain, not to mention the environment. Your soft and squishy pizza plushie will become your new best friend. True story, he was inspired by Slice, my New York pizza plushie that I've had since my theater days. This guy's been with me since before we started Game Theory, and now you could have a slice of your own for whatever journey you're about to start. And the apron. The apron is my absolute favorite. Look at the stitching on this thing. Heavy canvas, nice and long, double pockets. I mean, this thing screams kiss the cook without even saying it. And if I'm being honest, this is the food theory merch item that I've gotten the most use out of by far. It's hot grill in summer and Dad Pat's basically been rocking this food theory apron non-stop since Memorial Day. If you're at all interested, make sure you check them out. The items are listed directly below this video. And who knows, if you guys are excited about this food theory merch, then maybe some food theory cookware might be coming down the line. <gasps> that would be so cool. Alright, so that's super exciting thing number one. Super exciting thing number two is the mysterious unsolicited package that arrived on my doorstep from Grubhub a week ago. I cannot stress this enough, theorists. This episode is 100% hashtag not spawn. Grubhub somehow tracked down my address and sent me this cryptic package with the word confidential actually scrawled across the front. Never did I think that this would become my life, but I guess this is what I get for firing off an April Fool's Day theory linking the Grubhub cinematic universe to the Jimmy Neutron cinematic universe. And yes, for the uninitiated, I said Grubhub cinematic universe. For those of you who haven't seen the episode, or have successfully scrubbed it from your memory, the basic gist of the story is this. Grubhub recently released a series of ridiculous commercials featuring 3D animated characters, which led to a tidal wave of remarkable internet memes. Great internet minds figured out that there are actual relationships and backstories to these characters, aka actual Grubhub lore. And where there's lore, there is MatPat. We took it from there, picking up on some key details that suggested the cast of the 3D animated Grubhub commercials was in fact the cast of Nickelodeon's 3D animated hit show Jimmy Neutron just 20-ish years in the future. And I know that sounds crazy, but honestly it's only the second weirdest Nickelodeon 3D animated nostalgia meme that's making the rounds at the moment. The first is that Backyard Again song that recently took the number one slot on Spotify. Castaways. Anyway, for a deeper look into our take on the Grubhub lore, definitely go watch the full episode where we laid it out piece by piece. Now, when I first opened this confidential package, I was hoping it would be one of two things. Either complete verification that our theory was true, or complete verification that our theory was wrong. I'll be honest, Chicken Sandwich Guy has been making regular appearances in my nightmares for the past three months, and I am more than ready to put this chapter of my life to rest. But alas, the contents of the package only pulled me in deeper, to the extent that I'm concerned Grubhub might become the FNAF of the Food Theory channel. So, for better or worse theorists, let's unpack this envelope together. The first thing I pulled out was this. What? <laughs> Oh my god, that's so cheeky. I can't believe they did that. Yeah, that's the bag that I concluded killed Milkshake Lady, though Goddard and the crowd seem to have disappeared by the time the image was captured. Grubhub apparently wants us to look into that tan house in the background, or maybe they mean something else in the vicinity, like the blue car? It's worth noting that the tan house and blue car are shown in the commercials that we analyzed in the first episode. They're just easy to overlook since they're mostly obscured by the crowd. We double-checked this house and car against a lot of the cars and houses of the Jimmy Neutron, 
Omicron person came up empty-handed. Next out of the envelope was this extreme wide shot of the entire town. Another source for clues, it would seem. Oh, is this like, wait, is this us... really like a Where's Waldo now? No, I think they're oh, giving us no. like the city layout. I think we're gonna have to identify where the city layout is and stuff. By the way, we couldn't find the tan house in this wide shot, but we may have located the blue house with the red roof that's directly next door to the tan house, way down there in the right-hand corner. Still don't know what any of that means, though. We'll talk about that later in this episode. But that's certainly not all that was in the package, not by a long shot. Grubhub also included a whole slew of fun props like Goddard blueprints that suggests that he indeed is the brown dog in the Grubhub commercial, a save the date that suggests milkshake lady and taco guy, aka adult Jimmy Neutron did in fact go through a bad breakup, and even a receipt that included a purchase of a purple flurp, aka the signature drink of Jimmy Neutron. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff in here, and the clues obviously all link the GCU to the Jimmy Neutron universe. Now, at this point, I do want to add this. Food Theory reached out to Grubhub after we received the package. Grubhub verified that it was indeed sent by them, which means that all of this, all of it, everything contained inside the package, like this striped shirt that's eerily similar to the McSpanky's uniform in the Jimmy Neutron universe is now part of the Grubhub Cinematic Universe. Sorry folks, this is canon. Nothing we can do about it now. Think about it this way. The creative minds behind the MCU have decided that Hawkeye wears Oakley shades, Bose headsets, and drives an Acura. Whether we like it or not, that's the way it is, because that's their call. Likewise, if the creative minds behind the GCU say their dog placed an order from a taqueria in Bedford, Texas, near the supposed location of Jimmy Neutron's hometown of Retroville, that's their prerogative. And who are we to say otherwise? Incident Incidentally, Bedford, Texas is a major link to the Jimmy Neutron universe. Though it's never explicitly stated in the show, there's good reason to believe that Retroville, Jimmy Neutron's fictional hometown, is located in Texas. Not only do we straight up see Jimmy Neutron blast off from Texas on a map, but the show's real-life production studio, DNA Productions, was located in Dallas, Texas. So when Grubhub references Bedford or includes a plane ticket to Fort Worth in their confidential package, it's pretty clear that they're linking the GCU characters to the greater Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, which means that they're linking the GCU to Retroville. So yeah, that is a pretty big connection. But the biggest find from the envelope had to be this. Oh god, there's a USB drive in here. Wait, there is? Now, what you need to understand is that we here at Food Theory scoured the internet high and low for every 3D animated Grubhub commercial in existence. But it turns out there's at least one more commercial out there. A commercial that, as far as we can tell, has never been released. That's right, theorists. The thumb drive contained the animatic for a never-before-seen Grubhub commercial connected to this whole conspiracy. Okay, so if you're not familiar with what an animatic is, it's basically a lightly animated storyboard, sometimes with an audio soundtrack. An animatic will often get produced before the final polished animation takes place. This way, the entire creative team can be on the same page about the story, the camera angles, etc. For instance, here's a scene from Incredibles 2 with the animatic and final scene side by side. Now, given that the file name for this animatic was GH Unreleased MP4, it seems Grubhub intended to produce this commercial at one point but changed their mind for whatever reason. But I cannot overstate how exciting it is for Food Theory to get our hands on this. Even in animatic form, another unaired Grubhub commercial helps round out the GCU that much further. So what exactly is in this ad? Well, it features a lot of familiar faces from the ads that you already know and cringe love. Chicken Sandwich Guy, Milkshake Lady, and one of the college-aged characters that we'll call Burrito Guy. But the animatic stars a character that we didn't talk a whole lot about in our first Grubhub episode, Salad Lady, who, as we established, is actually the adult version of the Jimmy Neutron boy genius character Cindy Vortex. Now, the plot of the 30-second Cindy Vortex ad is pretty straightforward. She orders pizza off the Grubhub app, then floats up into the the sky, which, of course, is actually a magical Grubhub red space. And there, Cindy Vortex and her Grubhub pals fly around and eat food. There's a handful of uniquely shaped clouds populating the red space sky. There's the Grubhub diamond, which we see in many Grubhub ads, including this one. There's a chicken leg, maybe a mushroom or broccoli kind of thing. But then there's this cloud, a perfect smoke ring. Yeah, maybe they were going for a donut, but that doesn't change the fact that this here is a literal example of a Vortex photo. 
folks. In fluid dynamics, the term vortex describes fluids or gases that rotate around an axis. Think whirlpools, tornadoes, and yes, smoke rings. Which means that there is a blatant vortex easter egg in the Cindy Vortex ad. What am I supposed to do? Not make a food theory episode about it? Okay, so might it just be a coincidence that there's a circular cloud that bolsters our salad lady as Cindy Vortex theory? Sure, but we have no choice but to toss it onto the pile of other GCU Jimmy Neutron coincidences. And that pile is getting pretty tall at this point. Now, there's one last item in the package that we should probably discuss here. This image of Taco Guy's dog, who we've established is actually an updated version of Jimmy Neutron's robotic dog Goddard. Now, clearly this picture shows mechanical components in Goddard's body. But the really interesting thing is that aside from the leg, this shot is virtually identical to a screenshot from an existing Grubhub ad. But surely both can't be true. Goddard can't both have a visibly mechanical leg and a normal looking leg. Or can he? See, this image of a mechanical dog, which again is now GCU canon, actually bolsters a theory that I wanted to include in the first Grubhub episode, but ultimately wound up cutting for time, and also because it was pretty far out there, even for that episode. But this package from Grubhub has given me the confidence I need to keep pulling on these kinds of threads, so I'm just gonna take the opportunity to surface the theory now. In our first GCU episode, we focused mainly on two Taco Guy ads, where he's, well, he's Taco Guy. He has taco posters on his walls, he eats tacos, tacos are kinda his thing. But here's the twist. There's another commercial in which tacos aren't his thing. Wendy's is his thing. And when you see the Wendy's commercial alongside the taco commercial, it's immediately obvious that the character's movements are completely identical in every way. And this, I would argue, is another massive link to the Jimmy Neutron verse. See, it's well established that Jimmy Neutron is capable of cloning himself. We see him create six of them to help do his chores in episode 31. Now, these so-called clones all come out exactly like Jimmy, but with a couple things slightly different. While his clones often had different hairdos, or different personalities, or different voices, I'm walking here! You got a problem with that? They were, for the most part, pretty easy to confuse with the OG Jimmy at a glance. Now, I'm not suggesting that Wendy's guy is just some Jimmy Neutron clone living a similar life in an apartment across town. There's more to it than that. The characters' movements aren't similar, they're identical. This has gotta be a parallel universe situation. Like, somebody cloned the entire world Taco Guy lives in, and that cloned world came out just a little bit different. And that, friends, is exactly what happens in episode 54 of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius. One of Jimmy's clones, Evil Jimmy, straight up clones Earth, creating a parallel world identical to Earth in every way, except for the fact that everything's evil. For a truly memorable wedgie, apply a set of common household jumper cable. The one coming, you! No! Stop! Jimmy Neutron saves the day by trapping evil Earth and evil Jimmy along with it in the dark matter dimension where they presumably exist to this day. You're not gonna get away with this, Whippy Dip. You can't keep an evil clone down. I'll be back! <laughs> So the logic here, if you can call it that, is that the Jimmy Neutron Cinematic Universe has parallel universes. Therefore, the GCU has parallel universes. Each parallel universe is slightly different from one another. In one, you may have a version of Jimmy that loves Wendy's instead of tacos. A third universe might feature a version of Jimmy that still loves tacos, but his dog has visible machinery on its hip. Kind of makes you wonder which universe is the evil one. Tacos or Wendy's? <gasps> is Wendy's evil? It's a theory for another day. At any rate, the long and short of it is this. We really appreciate Grubhub sending this package to us. It was a lot of fun to go through and analyze. It bolstered our existing Grubhub theory in a lot of blatant ways, but also in a number of subtle ways. I sincerely hope that Grubhub has more 3D animated commercials in the works, because it feels like there's a lot more left to unpack here. The coincidences just keep piling up, and eventually I believe that we'll reach a tipping point that convinces even the most skeptical theorists out there. And with that, there are three particular pieces of information that I'm gonna make available to you right now, theorist hive mind, because honestly, we weren't sure what they were trying to tell us. Us. The picture with the house circle, the wide shot of the town, and the all-new commercial animatic. All of them are worthy of further analysis, and especially the city and home shot, we're just, we're not sure what Grubhub is trying to tell us with those. So that's why we here at Food Theory have uploaded these three files in their entirety and full resolution for you to sink your teeth into at home. The links to all those are down in the description below, along with the most important link of them all, the link to Food Theory merch. Don't forget to check those out, friends. I'm telling you, the apron is just in time for grilling season, and of course, pizza plushy season is year-round. Will we eventually be able to crack the interconnected lore of the Grubhub cinematic universe? Feels like we're only one brain blast away. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit.